Hey guys, welcome to my studio. And no, I'm not playing the piano for you guys today. That's my other show, Omar's Music Chamber on Saturdays. But anyway, I want to introduce you guys to my friend Eric White today. He's a music video director. He's also a Hollywood film director. I'm really excited to be talking to him today. He's worked with many great artists like Rihanna, Chris Brown. He's also directed Ice Cube and The Lottery Ticket, which was a Warner Brothers movie. So I can't wait to talk to him. And I think he's on his way to come up right now. As a matter of fact, he's coming in. I can't wait to talk to him. Let's go and check it out. Welcome hey. to the show. I'm so happy yeah. to see you, man. Happy to be here. So tell me what's going on. I mean, uh, we've been we've been out and hiding for a few months. What's yeah. going on? Tell me what you've been doing. Well, I wake up in the morning to a pint of ice cream. And <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I mean, basically, you know, I was I was starting a show called Ho Phase, which is uh, like a new young Sex in the City in L.A. multicultural. So I started that show then around end of March, you know, when COVID started taking over, like we just pretty much stopped and we're just waiting to get back going. So until then, I've been taking that time to write on my own, you know, revisit the things I love, do music yeah, and just find my center. So actually like some people uh, are, are not using this time wisely. I'm using this time to just, just find the things I love again. So, I think it's really important, right? I mean, yeah. now that you have some time where you know you're going to be inside mm -hmm. and why not use it to your advantage, right? Yeah, yeah. And and I should say that I'm really happy that you've asked me to collaborate with you on this project to write music for it. Absolutely. So, we need Omar in it. It's Omar <laughs> is coming down to help me out. He's coming from the Grammy gods, I'm, I'm, coming down I'm to really, to I'm really honored. I think... Um, I should say this will not be the first project we collaborated on. I, I'm really, really happy. Before we get into all the great things you've done, mm. I just want to say I was so honored and so happy with the results mm. when you directed Here I Am, mm, you know, for you. my new des uh, album Destiny, which, you know, when I, I was like, should I ask him? Because I, I know you're not really directing music videos anymore, but I was like, man, I, I got to ask Eric to do this because this... It just means so much to me, and I was just so happy when you said yes. Oh. And it turned out to be so amazing. Thank you. Such a powerful song, though. I, and it was needed at this time, so I just had to do it. And you acted in it, and your daughter, and, and your wife, and it just... The song, the emotion in the song that you bring, I had to shoot visuals. I would have paid you. <laughs> well, I, listen, I appreciate you doing that, but going back to a little bit to where you started, I know you come from New York. Yeah. You were born in New York. And just tell me a little bit about you know, upbringing in New York and that culture from the East Coast mm -hmm. and uh, that. Yeah, so grew up in, born in Brooklyn, raised in Queens at my grandmother's house. So I basically always had a love for film and music, but uh, music took over at first. So I went to school for engineering and became an engineer. My cousin, well, actually my uncle, Hype Williams, he started uh, as a PA and assistant. The Hype Williams. I he was an assistant. I said, okay, I'm going to do this music thing. He said, All right, I, I love movies. I'm going to do this movie thing. So he went and he was an assistant on music videos. And I was an assistant working engineering. Isn't he like the Francis Ford Coppola of like music videos, Hype Williams? I mean, isn't The like... 90s of hip hop music videos, which is the golden age of music yeah. videos, is the Hype Williams era. He's the guy that elevated music videos into 
what it became, right? Yeah. It was just like, it was music videos where you were behind a green screen before, right? Yeah. Kind yeah. of. I mean, yeah. I might be exaggerating, but he's the one that took it to a cinematic level. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, we grew up together. So we watched all the same movies and things like that. And, and watching him do that made me say, okay, yeah, you just got to find your, your, own, your own path. The hip hop, I would say that the hip hop videos back then before had, was kind of bland. Is that, I don't know if I'm using the correct term, but he's the one that brought colors. He brought that cool cinematography, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Hip -hop. So you had a vision, right? Yeah. You had a vision to take the hip hop music videos to a completely different level. Yeah, and I was there from the beginning. I was an engineer. I was working for this engineer named uh, Andy Wallace, who oh, he yeah, pretty much he did Nirvana's yeah. big album, Def Leppard. He's a legend. A legend. Yeah. So I was his assistant. So I, I eventually branched off on my own and I had a session in New York, I think with Puffy, a, hit, a heavy D session. And I went, I left the set to go visit Hype, who was just starting to direct. And I visited him on set. It was a Jodeci video. It was the snowing out. I took my backpack and walked over to the set. Mm. And once I saw the cameras and the music, that was what that was the missing piece that I was doing with engineering, but I was missing something. I was missing the visuals. So once I went to the set and saw that world, I, I walked to Barnes and Noble. In my backpack, I packed all the cinematography books. I just went, just took them all. It was like 10 of them, bought them. Uh, quit engineering, quit that session, and went to set and pretty much told Hype, this is, this is what I'm doing now. You took a big chance because... I did. Yeah, at that time, you don't know. I mean, no. you, you have no idea. Yeah, and this is when he started out. So he wasn't big yet. So I just worked under him. And uh, in the process, I wound up working on, you know, I, I knew Biggie, I knew Tupac. I worked on like all those early iconic videos. California Love, I was there on the desert. If you, I'm like, uh, you know, uh, what's, it, what's his name? The um, Tom Hanks movie, um, Forrest Gump. For like a lot of element, a lot of things that happened in history, I was there. A you lot of there. videos, yeah. When, when Tupac got shot uh, in New York, I was actually, we were downstairs shooting a video for Biggie. So we stopped for a minute, took a break, and then the guy came downstairs and said, oh wow, Tupac got shot at Quad Studios in New York by wow. Times Square. When, uh, should so you not, were there? Like I was de there, I was, I was Puffy's driver. We were doing uh, driving shots, and I was his driver, because I, I, I went from engineering to being a sound man on videos, because I didn't know anything about film, so I figured, okay, I know sound, I see there's a sound man rolling sound on these music videos, I'll do that and watch and see what they're doing and that's how I'll, that'll be my school I know being an artist I know I have my own vision and sometimes I'm like in my own head and yeah you, you know I like crazy. to see certain things done a certain way yeah. as an artist but I still think of myself as being a pretty humble guy, yeah. you know, but I know there are other artists yeah. that, you know, don't necessarily think the same way and yeah. they have their own vision. It could be pretty big. How do you overcome that? How do you collaborate with guys like that, that they have their very strong willed yeah. and they have their own egos, I would say, as a major artist? How do you deal with that? Um, it's all, you, you are, you're partially a psychiatrist, you're you got a Jedi mind trick people into yeah. doing things. Well, you can't again. mention ego without mentioning mentioning Diddy. Like Puffy is, he's a great guy. What is? It I'll like, say this. What is it I'll like to work with that guy? He's a very successful guy. Successful guy. He screams a lot. He yells a lot. He kicks things. He threatens really? to kill you. Yes, but the thing about the reason why he's so successful is because ninety percent of the time he's right. He's right, and it just doesn't seem to click. I'll give you a couple puffy examples. So one time, um, 
I was shooting a video for B5, a group on his label, right? And he was in Miami, so he couldn't be there for the video. But he wanted to FaceTime and be there on set so we can watch everything that we're doing. So he wanted to make sure we had a laptop with you know, his head basically there on the set. So next to me, my director's chair, I'm watching. I have a laptop with Puffy's head next to me. So I'm watching the video we're shooting. I hear, yo, yo. Yo, cut it, cut it. I'm like, who the fuck? And I look down, it's Puff's head. Like, I said, cut it, motherfucker. Don't you I said, cut it. And I was like, what? What's wrong? I pick him up. I'm like looking at his head. And he's like, yo, look at that belt buckle. I don't like that belt buckle. Let me go over there. Let me talk to them. I'm like, what do you mean? Let me go. So I go over to the guys. He's talking to the guys. And they're like, no, the stylist put his, you know, the pants. He's like, it don't fit right. You know what? Take me to the stylist. I'm like, what? He's like, take me to the stylist. So I'm walking the laptop with his head down the hall, he's screaming at people, he, I'm pointing at people, he's yelling at the stylist, you know, I'm taking him back to the chair. So for the rest of the day, every, everybody is like ducking under the chair and you know, giving him the finger behind. But he was right. Everything that he was saying about the look and about the sound, he has a very distinct vision and he's right. And he doesn't sleep. Well, basically, you know, I started directing videos, I got successful with videos, um, but I always wanted to, it was always a means to an end. It's creative, but I always wanted to get into films. So being a first time director, I basically didn't really have that many films in Hollywood that they would give me, you know? They, yeah. There were some opportunities, but they were, you know, not exactly what I wanted. So I had the idea for lottery tickets since I was a kid. So growing up in Brooklyn- Wait, so this was your idea? Lottery ticket. ticket, yeah. Lottery ticket was your, your, okay. Yeah, yeah, basically I, um, growing up in Brooklyn, like I lived in Ebbets Field, which are the projects. Yeah. So if you're bringing in a new TV and you have to like bring it up to your house, you gotta bring it in like late at night. Cause if you bring it in during the day, everyone's gonna know you have a big TV that you're bringing into your yeah. house. <laughs> so that was like the whole premise. And I, that happened to me as a, as a kid. Got with uh, Abdul Williams, who's a great writer now. Sure. And, um, just pitched that and Ice Cube loved it. So I went to Ice Cube, Warner Brothers, and we wound up shooting it. So I wanna thank Eric so much. Uh, great to have you here in the studio. We're gonna keep talking because Eric and I don't really get together that often. So it's really fun to keep talking to him, but we're gonna leave you guys. I wanna thank you for watching and please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you on the next show. Take care.